Gemara Masechet Yoma, page 86a. It says, all sins are forgiven on Yom Kippur if you have an intention to do tshuva. All sins are forgiven on Yom Kippur if you have an intention to do tshuva. I'm not going to continue violating Shabbat. I'm not going to continue going out with the Goya. I'm not going to continue going out with uh, the Goy. I'm not going to continue eating Tarev. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do tshuva this year, Hashem. I'm going to do it. I'm going to keep going to the shiur. I'm going to keep listening. I'm going to keep reading. I'm going to do it. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I'm going to do it. I'm not perfect. I'm still a baby. But I'm going to try to do something about it. You have an intention to do tshuva. All sins can be forgiven on Yom Kippur. Except one. Chilul Hashem. Chilul Hashem, no forgiveness. Only forgiveness for, for Chilul Hashem begins at death. Meaning, part of your tshuva, you must die. There's no forgiveness for Chilul Hashem while you're here. Why? It's that big of a deal. It's that big of a deal. You took the name of Hashem Barach and you desecrated it. You treated it like it was a, on a tissue. David the Melech knew this. That's why David the Melech says his entire life was to occupy himself with honoring Hashem's name. When you occupy yourself with honoring Hashem's name, you have no time to desecrate His name. So, here, Rabbi Yochanan bin Broka is giving us some breaking news. He says, there's a lot of mitzvot in the Torah. Many, many mitzvot in the Torah. But there's one specific one you really need to make sure you have an understanding of its significance. And that's honoring Hashem. Because as a Jew, even the Goyim call us the chosen people. Hashem calls us the chosen people. His firstborn, my sons, and so on. But everyone knows we're the chosen. It says, being the chosen, you have a responsibility. You have a responsibility, meaning you are the representation of Hashem. No one says that the Arabs are the representation of God. Even the Arabs themselves don't say that they're the representation of God. No one says that the Christians or the Catholics are the representation of God. Even they themselves call the Jews the chosen people. No Buddhist in history said, I'm the representation of God. Everyone agrees the Jews are. Everyone agrees, meaning that the world will always view you as the representation of God. Meaning whatever you do goes on Hashem's account. You act like a tame, uh, a, a, a bal chaim, some type of animal that's impure. People are going to say, oh look, that's, look, this is what God teaches them. You're a thief, they think God's a thief. You're a liar, they think God's a liar. You cheat, they think God cheats. You're the representation. Now when you go to stores, for example, these big companies, whether it be Apple or Best Buy or any of these companies that have big, big outlets, not the small mom and pops, but even some of them have it. You notice something that all of the employees have. All of them have something called a uniform. UPS uniform, Best Buy uniform, Apple uniform, everybody has a uniform. Everybody has at least a shirt or a hat. They all look the same, for better or for more, more or less. Why? Because they want it, they're, representing, they're representing the store. But the first thing, if you ever work for any of these companies, or you have a relationship with any of these companies, is that some of these very big companies, they're very, very careful with who they give this clothes to. Meaning, some of them, they don't let you go home with this clothes. They don't let you go home with your uniform. They say, no, no, we have a locker room. You leave your uniform in the locker room. Don't take it home. Or if you take it home, you're only going to have two pairs. You're not allowed to buy more than you. We're not, we're not going to give you more than two pairs. Why? Why are they so, why are they so uh, careful with clothes? Clothes, five bucks. You're a zillion dollar company. $500 billion company, $50 billion company. You care about five dollars? Care about ten dollars? It's the uniform. After all, I'm advertising you. They said, yes, exactly. That's the point. That's the point. When you're in the office, when you're in the UPS truck, 
I know what you're doing. You're in a UPS truck. You're doing the right thing. You're representing UPS. You're representing FedEx. We know what you're doing. It's under control. Even if you go rogue, it's under camera. We know what's going on. You go home on a weekend. I don't know what you're doing. You could be a rapist for all I know. You could be a thief. You could be going to casinos. You could be hanging out with prostitutes. Who knows what you're going to do? We don't want you wearing your UPS shirt while you're doing all this garbage that you do in your personal life. Why? Because you're a representation of our company. We don't want the public to think that our UPS drivers go to these places, hang out at these places, act like this, do this. No, Apitom. Mapitom. Who wants you? What are you talking about? They look at you like you're crazy. Why would you think you could take it home? Why would you think we want the responsibility of having you carry our name everywhere? No, no. It's under control. As a Jew, as a Jew, you have that responsibility 24 hours a day. Like it or not, have a keeper or not, at some point or another, someone is going to recognize you are a Jew. That means you have a responsibility. Why? Because the minute you slip up, the minute you curse, the minute you steal, the minute you do wrong, all the satanim around you are going to say, look at the Jew. Immediately, all of a sudden, religion becomes something important. All of a sudden, religion became the number one subject of the day. Don't say, oh, look at the white guy. Don't say, oh, look at the Indian guy. Or look at the Chinese guy. No, they don't say that. They don't even say, look at the Arab guy. But if it's a Jew, look at the Jew. Why? But he's an Indian Jew. How do you know he's a Jew? No, no. Jew, we know. If it's a Jew, we know. It doesn't matter where. If he's black, if he's white, if he's green, if he came from Mars, he has things coming out of it. If he's a Jew, we know. Why? It's a representation of God. It's a representation of God. We know. That carries a certain amount of weight. Rabbi Yochanan ben Broca is telling you that weight is heavy. Why? You slip up. You have a sin you can't do tshuva for. You have a sin you cannot fix on Yom Kippur. So all these fools that walk around with big Jewish clothing, the strimal and the jackets and the long beads that can sweep the floor in the streets, they look really, really Jewish, but you see them in casinos or strip clubs or bars and stuff like that. These people have not just one sin. They have a bank, a bank the size of J.P. Morgan worth of sins. A bank worth of, of, full of sins for attending one time. I remember when I used to be a Shema Chemalai, all, all the sins I used to make, I used to go to casinos to play cards. I thought it was fun. I didn't know it's not allowed. I didn't know that it's stealing. Because the guy that you win the money from doesn't want to give you the money. So in essence, you're taking money from him against his will. It's considered 100% stealing. But how do I justify myself? Number one, he agreed to the same rules I agreed to. That makes sense. The other way I justified it, there was always at least one or two religious guys on the table. There's always at least one or two religious Jews on the table sitting with us. Always. I'm thinking, listen, me, I'm not representing anything. I represent me. It's a secular person. Where I represent? I love I loved God since I was a kid, but I didn't know the truth. I had my own version of God, like most people. This guy says he's like Moshe Rabbeinu. He wears the kippah, the hat is as big as the room. He wears special clothing, all this stuff. He goes, prays a few times a day. I'm lucky if I pray once a week. What are you doing here? I know why I'm here. What are you doing here? I'm not claiming to be a representation of Hashem. You are. What are you doing here playing cards with me? What are you doing in these bars? What are you doing in Hashem HaChem with all these prostitutes and stuff like that that people see? They show this stuff. They highlight these people. What are you doing here? What he's doing is that he is really empty inside. And the whole thing that he has is just uniform. He's the same thing as the UPS, FedEx, or Apple employee. He goes to work with the uniform, but he cares less about the company. 
All he does, he goes, he looks a certain way, but as soon as he has an opportunity, he'll take whatever he can get. The uniform looks the same for all. What's inside is very different. What's inside is very different. And once a person does not have Nidacha mind, a person does not have fear of the Almighty, that means everything inside is empty. Empty. אני מברך את הרבנים, הרב ירון ראובן, הרב אפרים כחלון, ראשי ארגון בעזרת השם, שערכו בפעליון, שעלו מעלה מעלה, יהיה להם ברכה והצלחה, הקדוש ברוך הוא ימלא בלשונות ליבם, לטובה ולברכה, שבכל אשר יפנו, ישכילו ויצליחו, יזכו לעשות כאלה וכאלה, הודיעו תורה לאדירה, אמן ואמן. בעזרת השם רשת בכל הארץ. הוא היהודי הזה, הוא היה מיליונר, סגר את כל הביזנס, אמר אני משקיע פה בעולמה של תורה. איפה הוא גר? בפלורידה. פלורידה, איפה זה פלורידה? באמריקה. במיאמי. כן, ליד. אנחנו שם עכשיו הולכים להקים קהילה ספרדית. חזק אותו בשביל. קהילה ספרדית גדולה. אני גם מה שבירכתי אותו. כן. קהילה ספרדית גדולה.